Okay, now that we have defined complex numbers, let's look at what operations can be performed. So obviously, we're going to start with the simple operations of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Now, a certain notation introduction here. We use z to denote a complex variable. And in general, we write z equals x plus i y when x and y are used so that you can connect it with the visual representation using x and y coordinates. Idea for addition subtraction is that like terms combine, meaning what are the like terms? The real parts combine and imaginary parts combine. So in general, if z1 is x1 plus iy1 and z2 is x2 plus iy2, then z1 plus z2 becomes x1 plus x2, the real part, plus i imaginary. And you can check that this is a complex number. Example here. So here let's collect the real term. It's 5 plus 7. And then let's collect the imaginary terms. That's 4i minus 11i. So that's 12 minus 7i. So this is a complex number. Now here, again, the real parts are, just be careful here, because you have a negative. So this is negative 5 plus 7i. Negative, negative becomes a positive, And a negative, negative becomes a positive. So when you combine them, that's 6 plus 13i. Multiplication. There are two things to remember when you multiply them. First is the idea of foiling or distribution. And second is the fact that i square actually has a real value. It has a numerical value of negative 1. Example, 4i times 3 minus 5i gives you 4i times 3 minus 4i times 5i. That's 12i minus 20i squared. 12i minus 20 times negative 1, 12i plus 20, 20 plus 12i. Similarly here, when you file out, there's going to be four products. And then you combine the i terms, the i squared terms, and then replace it by negative 1. Then you get a real number, which you can again combine. And in the end, if you notice, this is a plus bi, right? So it is a complex number. Okay, another example here that I'm going to work out in this video. 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. 4 times 6 is 24. And 4 times negative 7 is i squared. So that's 30. Negative 35 plus 25 is negative 11i. That's negative 28 times negative 1. That's 30 minus 11i plus 28, which is 58 minus 11i. Now caution, let's say you're asked to do this. Um, one way to solve this would be negative 3 times negative 5. That becomes root 15, right? But that's not correct. This is wrong. In fact, how you want to do this is this is root 3 times root of negative 1 times root 5 times root of negative 1. Well, this is root 3i and root 5i. That's root 15i squared. So it's actually negative root 15. And that's because we're working with complex numbers here. So we have to be careful. Um, that we do not apply the incorrect operation here. The last topic is division of complex numbers. And we actually already have the tool that's going to help us divide complex numbers. If complex numbers can be multiplied, then they can be divided. That's the idea. In fact, there is a way that you can multiply two complex numbers to always get a real number. Example, I'm picking these for a specific reason. Let's say as 1 plus 2i times 1 minus 2i. Um, uh, let's remove that. So file out 1 times 1 gives me 1. 1 times negative 2 gives me that. 2i times 1 gives me this term and so on. In the end, I'm left with a real number. Now, of course, this works because of this identity. a plus b times a minus b is a squared minus b squared. And i squared is negative 1. What does this remind you of? Conjugate. Now, we have the same definition here. 
conjugate of a complex number a plus ib is a minus ib. What you do here is you necessarily change the sign of the imaginary part. So the conjugate of a plus ib is a minus ib and the conjugate of a minus ib is a plus ib. Now why talk about conjugate? Because we can use it to make sense of division. 7 plus 4i over 2 minus 5i, in this form it is not a complex number because it's not a plus bi. So what we do is we multiply and divide by the conjugate of the denominator. Why we do that is because now we know that when we do this, this is going to be a real number. To be a real number. And then the top part doesn't matter if it's imaginary because the bottom is real. And then over here, you can split it as two fractions. And now that is of the form A plus B I, which means it is a complex number. Let's do some more division examples here. So the conjugate is 4 plus 3i over 4 plus 3i. Now you already know that a minus bi times a plus bi is always going to give you a squared plus b squared. So you just have to worry about the numerator. So you have 6 plus 2i, 4 plus 3i, that's going to be 4 squared plus 3 squared. File out the top, 24 plus 18i plus 8i plus 6i squared over 16 plus 9. That's going to give you 24 plus 26i minus 6 over 25, which is 18 plus 26i over 25. And then you split this as 18 over 25 plus 26 over 25 times i. Another example. Now in this case, I just have 3i here. There are more than one ways of solving this problem. Um, let's say method one is I go, I use the same thing. I take the conjugate. Now the conjugate of this is, think of this as zero plus three i. So you just change the sign of the imaginary part. And then the, the top part now is negative three i times five i minus four over nine, right? Or three squared. Distribute, you get negative 15 i squared plus 12 i over 9. And that's just 15 plus 12 i over 9, which is 15 over 9 plus 12 over 9 i, which is further 5 over 3 plus 4 over 3 i. Yet another way of solving this would be alternate method only works if you have a single term in the denominator is you split the fraction so it's 5i over 3i minus 4 over 3i so it's 5 over 3 minus 4 over 3i and then you remember that I can change this into a number by multiplying it by i so I do that for numerator and denominator and I get 4i over 3i squared which is negative making this whole thing positive same answer this method only works if you have a single term in the denominator, so just use the general method. Now the last topic is powers of i. Now consider i, i squared, i cubed, i4, i5, i6, and so on. Question is, is there a pattern? Let's see. We already know i squared is negative one. Now i cubed is gonna be i squared times i, which is negative one times i, so it's negative i. I to the fourth is i squared squared, negative one squared, that's positive one. And then i5 goes back to being i. So this pattern, what it becomes is i, negative one, negative i, one, back to i. So it repeats after four. So the cycle goes i, negative one, negative i, one, back to i. This means that I can calculate any power of i. For example, i to the twelfth, now 12 is divisible by 4, so this is going to be 1. I do the 39 is I find the nearest that I know. I do the 36 is going to be 1 because that's the nearest power to 4. And then it's going to be I do the 39 is going to be same as I cubed, which is negative high. I do the 50 
I notice i to the 48 is 1, so i to the 50 is just going to be i squared, which is negative 1. That's all for this week.